How's it going, gents? Um, out of the KTM today. Just going to see if I can um, go on a little bit of an adventure. Haven't done this in a bit. Um, Formula One's on today, not the race. This is qualifying today. Um, I'm going to go see if I can climb a tree and watch some qualifying. Yeah, so while I'm doing that, I thought I might as well tell you about what I am planning with this Austrian orangey motorcycle. So, plans for the KTM are... Um, obviously, it's going to be a great dirt bike. Lots of uh, power. Plenty of power. A little, it's a little bit too leery sometimes. It's just kind of silly. Just, just so much power for a dirt bike. But um, I, I've got more plans for it. So um, some of you, oh god, windy, 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 windy. Um, some of you might already know, but um, uh, I'm planning a trip with. Um, good bud of mine, Nerb One, um, and Osmotica. Uh, we're going to cross the Simpson, the Simpson Desert, which is the world's uh, world's largest sand dune desert. We're planning on crossing that in June. Um, there's a few challenges which or what come with crossing the Simpson Desert. Um, the main one really is, well, it's quite a ride up to the Simpson Desert. Uh, I obviously live in Melbourne. Um, the Simpson Desert is up near the border of, uh, like, Queensland and Northern Territory and stuff, so it's a, it's a fair ride up there. Um, but that's not the hard bit. Um, the hard bit's the actual crossing of the Simpson Desert. So, the Simpson Desert, there's one kind of line that you take when you cross it. Uh, it's called the French Line. And um, I still don't know everything, so if, I, if I'm screwing it up, um, bear with me. But um, So basically, you're crossing between two points through a lot of sand dunes. That's it, really. Um, it's around 500-ish kilometres of sand dunes. Um, and obviously, no, no towns, no water, no fuel no food nothing so for that um for that 500 kilometers you need everything um so most of you bike bikers will know that most bikes can't do 500 kilometers um, this ktm will do about uh 250 kilometers if you're lucky out of its 12 liter tank um that's on a perfect freaking day um on the sand obviously it becomes much 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 worse I remember my WR, my WR used to go about 150 k's before its 7 litre tank was completely done. Um, on the sand, frick man, I had that freaking tank emptied in 70 k's. Um, the sand just absolutely kills your fuel economy, obviously. Um, so, um, so basically to, to, to cross the Simpson, you need to carry a lot of fuel, pretty much. Um, I'm planning on carrying around about 25 litres of extra fuel. Um, I think my mates are, uh, are deciding to carry a bit more. Um, they've got safari tanks and stuff. I'm planning on carrying my extra fuel and fuel bladders and the panniers. Uh, you've also got to take a little water. Um, it's a desert, so um, you obviously need water to live. Um, so it usually takes about two days to do the 500 kilometres. Um, some crazy dudes on DRZ 400s have done it in a day and stuff, the whole 500Ks of sand dunes. Um, we're planning on doing it in two days, uh, one camp in between. So you're looking at around 10 litres of water um, per person. So that's around 25 litres of fuel, 10 litres of water, all your camping gear, uh, your tent, sleeping bag, all of that gets freaking cold in the desert. Um, uh, all carrying on your bike. I'm going to carry all of that up to freaking Northern Territory, um, which is a massive, massive, massive ride. 
um, you know, thousands of kilometers. Uh, that's Formula One, it's in there. I'm gonna find a tree and see if I can see if I can see the track. Uh, like, I, I don't have a trailer or anything, so I have to ride this bike wherever I go to trails and stuff. So, um, uh, that's why I'll be putting on it luggage, luggage racks, you know, heated grips, bark busters, all that shit's coming for it. Um, it's gonna be more of my little adventure bike. Um, so that, that's what the plan for this thing is. Um, I also want to get supermoto wheels, I said that in my last video. Um, I love supermoto riding, I think it's the funnest shit ever. You can stack, just pick up your bike, ah, oh, it's so good. Um, so I want to get that also. Um, yeah, let's get in through there. Uh, oh, the cars are boring, these oh. Oh yeah, I miss the V8s of Formula One. Remember when I came here a few years ago and um, oh, they're a little louder this year. I can hear them a bit better than than last year. Last year was a joke, man. Um, when I when I came in the V8 era, man, you could freaking hear them from the city. You can barely even hear them now. Uh, Where's a good tree, man? Keep going up a bit. Yeah, it's a tree. There's the tree. This kid knows what he's doing. 636 boy. That was me freaking two years ago on my 636. I got parked right here as well. Uh, I told some tall bitch to get out of my way. People enjoyed that. Get out of my way, tall bitch. But yeah, I've already got a bunch of parts and stuff for the KTM. Um, Touratech things and very expensive <laughs> adventure gear, but... Um, it is fun to deck out your bike. Uh, right now there's pretty much nothing on the KTM yet. Just still enjoying it. Hear those freaking Formula One turbo cars. Okay. It's tripping me out. I'm, I'm thinking I'm hearing a car coming across, but I'm just I'm tripping out. Oh shit, I'm on the road. Jog it up. Uh, 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 uh. Alright, where's where's Tom's tree? There's a dude up in my tree. Where's where's Tom's tree? Oh, someone someone's come over here. Tom's tree is already being claimed. Never should have posted it online. Yeah, yeah that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do nicely. Just grab my phone out. Film some uh, Ricardo go past. I watched him in practice before and he wasn't doing so well, so maybe Red Bull don't have it this year. Trees are all overgrown this year. I'm struggling, struggling to see. You get a bit of corner, a bit of corner is straight. I'm up here in my kick-ass tree spot. What are these children doing? Um, yeah, Formula One cars. But yeah, I want to tell you a little bit more about this KTM 690. This thing is an absolute freaking monster. This is seriously one of the freaking fastest freaking bikes down low up to 60 k's an hour this thing's an absolute animal it'll wheelie first second third gear all day freaking long man it's very difficult to keep the front wheel down i actually have a really hard try hard time off the lights going fast because like watch this shit man first gear up second gear it's just it's just silly I think with supermoto wheels, it'll bring the weight over the front a little bit more. I might tone that down, but as much as I love a wheelie or two, man, it's freaking hell, man. You just can't use the throttle in first and second gear. Um, but it's a great bike. Um, in comparison to the WR, like I still think the WR is an absolute great little bike. Um, this thing def definitely has carries a little bit more weight to it. Um, it's a little bit taller, um, and the engine is uh, a lot. Oh, 
I wouldn't say rougher. It's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot more going on to it, it feels like. The, the little WR was quite refined um, for a single. It was actually really smooth. Um, whereas this has got a little bit more vibration. Um, at around 5,000 RPM, you get a lot of vibration through the bars. So I bought a set of bark buses that come with weights in them on the ends. The last thing I really want to be doing to a dirt bike is adding weight to it, but I really struggle with the vibration. Some people will like do rubber mounted freaking um, handlebars and shit, but I'm going to try out weights on the end of my um, bar ends. My last BMW had um, some vibration issues. Uh, like exactly 4,000 RPM, it had some vibrations. Put some bar ends on, some weighted bar ends, completely disappeared. Uh, so I'm gonna try that with this. Some bar ends, there's a kitten's bus. I wonder if that's full of strippers. One thing I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely say about the KTM is I was, um, I was quicker off-road on the little WR. Um, I don't even think it's got to do with weight or anything. WR had uh, a lot softer suspension um, and a really easy to use engine. This thing's just like a freaking, you're sitting on a rocket man. 70 horsepower um, off-road is mental man. Like that's more than you get from a freaking 530 EXC. It's, uh, it's a lot to ride off-road and the suspension is quite stiff, quite hard. Um, the whole bike's kind of, it feels like it's set up for someone who's a lot better at freaking riding off-road than me. I'm still pretty noob. Um, uh, that's why I like little WR. It was, it was easy, man. It was soft. It was freaking, it was a bit of a baby bike. It was, um, I felt like I could, I could do a lot on it. This thing is just like mental, man. It's like, I'm not, it's not like I'm riding the bike. It's like the bike's riding and I'm just freaking hanging on for dear life when I go off-road on this thing. So it's definitely going to be a, um, a test. Um, to try and get used to harnessing the power of this freaking 690 off-road. Um, i got to get some knobbies on it and then I can freaking start freaking banging it. Um, it's one over. That yeah, that way. No, it's that way. Not bad. Oh, I'm the worst guy. I'm the worst guy. Sorry, scooter tick. Oh, I took you the wrong way. Well, hopefully you ignored me. And my one over, I mean, it's one this way. The other way. Your other left, Neo. 